The greatest wealth transfer in history will take place over the next three years. Now's not the time to blindly hand your money to Wall Street or stick your head in the sand and hope it passes by. Your 401k won't save you in this COVID economy. And look, I get it. It's being just pumped with money that's going to end up in the hands of those who know how to get rich. If we go way back to the Great Depression, a third of the people in America were devastated. Many of them lost their homes. They were hungry. They were desperate. Like those pictures you see, I mean, you know that that had to be really difficult. But a third of the people in America actually maintained their lifestyle. Now, it wasn't as easy as before. It was still difficult, but they managed a way to do it. The thing I'm most interested in is what happened to the third of the people that actually grew their wealth? At that time in history, more millionaires were created, adjusted for inflation, than any other time before that. How? Well, part of it's being in the know. Another piece is personal responsibility. And let's unveil and cover this because no one is coming to save you. Those who do nothing are at risk of struggling and being in that lower third. If you aren't where you want to be, if you're doing more of the same, it's likely to yield the exact same results. Now, you may maintain, but it's going to be a lot harder. That is what a third in the middle are going to be faced with. So, what can you do to get in that top third? Let me break it down into three simple parts for you. The first one comes down to re-engineering, reinventing, and reinvesting. But reinvesting into you, your abilities, and a more compelling vision. See, even if you're getting an inheritance or marrying into money, you actually have to become a steward over those funds. You have to know what to do once that money comes in to create cash flow. And we've been so poorly trained as the population at creating cash flow with assets. It's always about accumulation, setting money aside, taking on unnecessary risk, relying upon a lot of other financial pundits and experts that are merely salespeople. So making or getting money is one thing. Keeping that money and making more and making it more productive is something entirely different. So what did those that made money and gained wealth during that depression do that applies today? Well, the world's changed, I get that, but it's changed in such a positive way. If we were in the midst of COVID during the Great Depression, there was no internet, there was no technology to the way that we can do business virtually today, that would have put the world at a halt. But today, there are more ways to make money. It's easier, but not to say it doesn't still require work. For the third that are gonna grow, this is what they'll have to do. They're gonna have to learn how to create cash flow today. No more accumulation, it's all about acceleration. What it's gonna be is about cash flow and cash management. Cash management means having money available. We're gonna have major opportunities over the next couple of years, but only for those that have access to capital, okay? Cash flow, that's the money that's coming in and that's the money that's going out. You gotta be really wise at any money that's going out and become expert at having more money come in even if you aren't doing work that day. Now, some people call that passive income. Passive income for most people is money that passes them by because they're not a steward, because they're not managing it, because it takes effort to maintain it, but it doesn't require daily management. It requires oversight. We've been sold this terrible bill of goods, this, this thing called accumulation. It's slow, it's dangerous, it's riddled with limitation and problems, and if you're accumulating money through compound interest, if you're accumulating money by being in it for the long haul, if you're dollar cost averaging by putting money in every single month, regardless of what happens, the game is rigged against you. Why wait for 30 years and go, I hope that I become financially independent. I hope this all works out, not knowing. If you can actually achieve that in 10 years or less without the risk. Well, how do you do it? Well, this is the way to become a better cash flow investor. It's called the five levers. The five levers are about leverage, but I'm talking about leveraging knowledge, not leveraging capital. There's a lot of people that go out there and they borrow money to buy things. They buy, they buy things and there's no asset attached to it. That's going to lead towards debt. Or they buy things they don't understand, and therefore they're easily going to lose that money because they're not a proper steward. So the five levers are the ways that you can become financially independent in 10 years or less. The first lever is to recover cash flow. It's to plug the leaks. It's to boost the bottom line. It's to keep way more of what you make without cutting back. Whether that's saving on tax, whether that's saving on interest, whether that's saving on investment fees that are non-performing, or insurance costs because of duplicate coverages, improper structure, or just simply ineffective costs. So we want to plug those leaks. The second lever is to engineer wealth. Find out what your monthly outgo is. What amount of money do you have to have on a monthly basis to live? Not to thrive, but just to live then it's time to reverse engineer and say what foundational pieces can we create so no money slips through the cracks 
and so that you're on a concrete slab versus sand, right? The second piece is more about that safety and sustainability. What makes this work long-term? How do we transfer risk? How do we make sure you have asset protection? How do we make sure that you're protecting your downside? And then the last piece of that is growth. Growth through cash flow. How can you create enough cash flow from assets or from businesses that cover your basic expenses? That's financial independence. Well, that takes us to the third lever, accelerating investment income. Anything that's not creating cash flow for you today is not working at full power and capacity. That cash flow can start to create a system that covers your basic expenses, which takes off the pressure for you so you can swing for the fences in everything you do. Now, everyone else is trying to save 10% of their money and try to earn 10% on it. And in today's world, that that has been getting them kicked in the ass, right? Earning 10% uh, in the long haul type of investing, overly reliant on the stock market, hasn't done a great job. Now, not to say some people haven't gotten extraordinarily wealthy from the stock market, but that's mostly the hedge fund managers and the people that have teams of analysts, not your average person that's just setting money into a mutual fund. So accelerating investment income is becoming a cash flow investor. So that from the day you put money into something, it's bringing monthly cash flow, because if your cash flow can be covered by assets, that means every active dollar you earn can be reinvest it into yourself, reinvest it into a business, or to do whatever you want because you don't have to use it to pay bills. It is a game changer. Now, the fourth thing is to scale business revenue. Now, whether that's you're working in a business and you contribute to the bottom line and you participate in the upside potential, or whether you've started a business and you're looking to grow that over time with less reliance on your daily activities. And then the fifth thing is to make it count. That's to invest back into yourself. That's to enjoy life along the way. That's so that you have the best energy and most creativity to contribute to the world because you're not exhausted, because you didn't grind it out for so long that you've got nothing left to give. These five levers of recovering cash, engineering wealth, accelerating investment income, scaling business revenue, and making it count by investing back into yourself is absolutely going to change the game for you. And if you want ways to improve cash flow, if you want permission to succeed, if you want to know where you can store your money without locking it away, go to wealthfactory.com forward slash megakit, and I'm giving you plenty of resources for being a subscriber on being on my YouTube channel. Now, what's the third piece to this? The third piece is making sure that wealth is sustainable. This is something that people hear all the time. Oh, high risk equals high return. No, high risk equals a high chance of loss. The pros learn to manage and mitigate risk. And the way we have to manage and mitigate risk moving forward is inflation is gonna sting. They're adding trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars to the economy, so if you're just sitting on money, if you're just waiting it out, if you're just dollar cost averaging, it's not gonna be enough. Now is the time to protect your profits. So how do you do that? Assets over paper profits. It's time to start looking for assets. Here's a few that you could look for. If you're a business owner or versed in business principles, look for private businesses to go on a massive sell over the next couple of years. Don't look at public stocks that are at a high multiple and the stock market is still overinflated and hasn't declined like it should during this time. Look at private businesses where they didn't manage their cash flow, where there's already an infrastructure, where your expertise can add something to it so you can be profitable from day one. For others, it might be real estate over mutual funds. Mutual funds are paper. I think they're gonna be in trouble. Some companies aren't gonna make it. They're gonna be in growth when they shouldn't be in growth with a lot of mutual funds. Real estate is something that you actually actually have a real property there, but I'd be looking for lower end real estate that when people lose their homes, when banks tighten on their lending, people are gonna need to live somewhere. So find residential real estate that makes sense to rent out even when the economy changes. All right, what are other fundamentals here? We've gotta look at the three key ways to get rich. The three key ways that are so simple yet so effective are number one, you gotta pay yourself first. You've got to automatically start saving money so you build up plenty of liquidity so that you have cash on hand when the opportunities arise. The second thing is invest in yourself. Part of that might be developing intellectual property. Right now, people are being trained to learn outside of school. There are more people online learning today than ever. So if you have something that's amazing, if you have something that can contribute to the world, COVID has absolutely taught people how to learn online at an unprecedented rate. So, the first thing we want you to do is pay yourself first. The second thing we want you to do is invest in yourself. And the third thing is find that skill set and capture it in a way that can improve and serve the world because that making a difference for people and in reaching more people through technology 
can absolutely help you out during these times. The wealth transfer, well, what's gonna happen is people that sit by idly, that set their money aside, that hope it works out for the long haul, will be decimated. Those people that are willing to invest in small businesses, that are willing to buy real estate, or they're gonna focus on intellectual property, they're gonna be the ones that the one he transfers to because they're part of the solution rather than just complaining about the problem. This is gonna happen over the next three years. Now is not the time to blindly hand your money over to Wall Street or stick your head in the sand and hope it passes by. I get it. It's not that we all wanna be this active in it, but we absolutely have to be responsible for, responsible for our finances. You can be one of those people that no matter what your financial situation is today, you can take action. You can be more resourceful. For those that want the money to be passive activity, money will pass you by and we will watch the rich get richer. There's plenty of money to go around, but again, only if you know what to do and how to get it. Now, you have the knowledge to transform your thoughts into profits and build the life you love. If you're looking for more on this topic, check out my video on how to get rich without sacrificing. You'll learn the answers needed in order to get out of the scarcity mentality and how to achieve economic independence. I'll see you there.